I'm here tonight to tell you about a bio-inspired innovation for modern naval warfare. In a world fouled by geopolitical tensions, it has never been more important for America to have a superior naval force. As Sir Walter Raleigh said in 1829, for whosoever commands the sea, commands the riches of the world and the world itself. In order to project power all across the globe, the US Navy relies on its fleet of amphibious vehicles. This is the AAV-7, which is the US Navy's state-of-the-art amphibious assault vehicle. Here's the problem. There have been no innovations with this design since the 1970s. This means we're falling behind navies all across the world, but I'm here tonight to fix that problem. <laughs> you can applaud for that. Your lives are about to change. <laughs> what qualities must a good amphibious vehicle have? Well, here are the three. First, A good amphibious vehicle must be amphibious. <laughs> that means it can travel on land and float in the water. A good amphibious vehicle also needs to be able to self-stabilize, even in the presence of fast external perturbations. And it must be self-sufficient, by which I mean it is capable of sustaining its crew for days or even weeks at a time without access to supply lines. This is a very challenging engineering problem, which means that there are only two solutions that the research community recognizes today. Those are machine learning <laughs> and bio-inspired design. <laughs> Using the latter, I wish to pr propose my solution, the submerged foul Naval Transport Unit <laughs> with Ration Sufficiency. Or Surf and Turf, for short. <laughs> In lay terms, it's a boat mounted on chickens. <laughs> now, does this satisfy the design criteria? Let's think about amphibiousness. It's well known that chickens can travel on land. <laughs> but the more important question, could your typical three kilogram broiler chicken float in the water? To answer this question, we adopt the physicist's approach and approximate our chicken as an ideal sphere. <laughs> Plugging in characteristic length scales and masses for a chicken, we can readily calculate that the average density of chicken is about 0.1 grams per centimeter cubed, which is substantially less than the density of water. That means that not only can travel, chickens travel on land, they can also float in the water. <laughs> but it's not enough to simply float. Could a chicken-born vessel carry enough heavy weaponry to be effective in combat? <laughs> to answer this question, I ask that you consider the following free birdie diagram, <laughs> in which the downward force due to gravity is balanced by an equal and opposite upward force due to buoyancy. Now, it's well known that the maximum possible upward force is the weight of water displaced by the chicken, which means that our idealized sphere chicken has the potential to support an additional amount of weight that is proportional to the density differential between water and chicken. <laughs> In fluid mechanics, this is often referred to as the our chicken's meaty principle. <laughs> It's true.
Plugging in characteristic values, we find that each chicken can support about an additional 60 pounds of weight, which means that a mere 10 chickens would enable a neutrally buoyant vessel to support an additional three Marines with all of their gear, approximately 70 rocket-propelled grenade launchers, or up to an additional 100 onboard backup chickens. or of course, any linear combination of Marines, <laughs> grenade launchers, and chickens. Let's think about self-stability. Could a surf and turf keep itself steady even in choppy waters? And the answer to this is yes. Chickens exhibit a natural gimbling mechanism. the chicken's head remains in place even as the body's moved around. We've determined through an exhaustive search of YouTube that chickens can gyroscopically stabilize <laughs> against perturbations that are as high as five hertz, which raises the question, is this fast enough to correct for typical perturbations that would be experienced by a surf and turf? To answer this, we turn to the dispersion relation for water waves plugging in characteristic wave vectors and water depths that our idealized chicken sphere array would need to correct for, we find that the fastest perturbations a surf and turf needs to correct for are no more than four hertz. <laughs> this means that the chicken gimbling mechanism is more than enough to keep a surf and turf steady. <laughs> we turn next to the question of self-sufficiency. Could a surf and turf support its crew for days or even weeks at a time without access to supply lines? And the answer to that is also yes. They're chickens. <laughs> They're chickens. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surf and turf is clearly a brilliant idea, but there's just one big problem. How do you park a surf and turf? Wouldn't the chickens just wander away? <laughs> to tackle this problem, let me catch you up to speed on the animal behavior literature. <laughs> it turns out, when you take a chicken and you draw a straight line extending from its beak outward away from its body, the chicken will freeze in place for minutes or up to hours at a time. This is called the tectonic immobility response in chickens. Let me give you a sense for how we can exploit this phenomenon to park a surf and turf. Here is an enemy shoreline onto which our surf and turf arrives. <laughs> yeah. In the early time regime, the surf and turf wanders because the chickens drift, but <laughs> Upon the unfurling of a large <laughs> We unfurl a large American flag and they freeze in place, thereby parking the surf and turf. Now, you might be wondering, what if we need to park for long periods of time? To address this, we go back to the animal behavior literature. Science tells us that chickens who defecate during the period of immobility remain frozen for substantially longer. That's right there, it's right up in the abstract. <laughs> this means that a government investment in surf and turf would spur business activity throughout the economy. If our goal is America first, the chickens have to go number two. <laughs> now, again, I know what you're thinking, but I'm gonna say it. Yes, 
this is the military industrial complex, and it's finger licking good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have tonight the opportunity to support a program that will rejuvenate our Navy, revitalize our economy, and restore America's rightful place at the top of the international pecking order. <laughs> if you support Surf and Turf, we can look forward to a future where, when our children ask, why did the chicken cross the road? We can proudly reply, unbridled American military <laughs> supremacy. Thank you all very much.